Hey guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today what we're going to do is upgrade our Epax X1 3D printer with the Parallel Light Array. I ordered this about uh, six weeks ago or so. I got it about four weeks ago. It's time to do the upgrade. Let's get started. Okay guys, so what we're going to do is replace this old array from the original Epax X1 and we're going to put in the new parallel light array which is supposed to give us a better field of light saturation. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing now. If you can, share this video with anybody you know who might be interested. All the shares and thumbs up I get help grow my channel. Okay guys, so here's the fun thing that I got that we are going to work on today. This came from Epax itself. It is the upgrade kit with the new lamp, the better lamp, uh, for the Epax X1, which brings us up to a more even light, a little, little lower power, but much more even, uh, much more sensitive UV lamp, which theoretically should work about 30% better than the existing lamp that's in there. So we're going to do the unboxing. I've had this for about a month, and I haven't had a chance to get to it. So let's take a look, unbox it, and see what's inside. Do. We got bubble wrap. Oh, we got lots of bubble wrap. Okay. The mounting kit for the frame. That's what this all is. We have to change some of the frame over for not just the lamp, but I think we got to move some parts around. So there's some mounting rails. For the frame replacement and extra bubble wrap, some more mounting hardware. Here's our receipt, which we don't need. This whole kit was a hundred dollars, so it, it's a well invest. It's a good investment if you want to do it yourself. You can actually save yourself about thirty dollars from buying the printer with the upgraded lamp on. Let's just take a look and see what's in here. Okay, mounting screws for our hardware. New power supply board. A new heat fan. This fan goes someplace in here where I believe we have to either add or replace an existing fan. And the best part of all, the UV lamp array for the UV lamp itself. This itself is going to change the way this whole printer works. So, with everything hopefully here, we are going to start our disassembly and see how well this works. Okay, so there's two parts you have to remove from the Epix X1. First, we're going to remove the bottom plate. You do that by removing the four feet. Um, once you remove those four feet, the bottom plate will actually come right off the printer. You can leave the printer either on its back or its side. But we are going to have to next remove the back plate from the printer. So you're going to want to flip it over and just remove that back plate. Once those screws are removed, the back cover comes off and we have access to the entire printer for disassembly and reassembly. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to strip this of any zip ties that we have holding any of the wires together and be careful not to cut any of the wires themselves. So just the zip ties, pull them apart and throw them in the garbage. So when you see a zip tie, just trim it off. Okay, so once you get all the zip ties disconnected, what we're going to do is we're going to remove this little piece of white foam from the motherboard. And you're going to be very, very careful to do this. And we're going to remove the LCD screen connector. 
So there's the white foam. I'm just going to put that aside. And now we're going to remove this LCD plug. It should just pop right off, just like so. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is remove the USB cable that's on the bottom. It has a little bit of glue stuck to it, so just pull it straight down and then you can pull the little piece of glue on there. It's just like hot wax. And that exposes two screws inside, way up inside, that we're going to remove the motherboard. So those two screws hold the motherboard in place. Let's see if our tool can get in here. And then loosen them up. It's a tight fit. There's our first motherboard screw. And the other one is under this ribbon way in the back. And hopefully I can get to it without any shocking little issues. I apologize for my head being in the way, guys. There we go. And we will loosen that screw up. And you can see now the motherboard is loose. And that is our motherboard for the Epics X1 printer. Okay, so with the motherboard completely out, now what I want to do is remove the ribbon cable for the for the LCD display. And that has two little tabs that we're just going to use our fingernails. We're going to push up on the little gray tabs on either side very gently. And once those are loose, the cable should just come right off, just like that. So I've got the Z, uh, the stop switch here is off. This is for the Z-axis motor. I'm going to take that off right now. This is for one of the fans. This is for the second fan. This is the power. And this is our power for our UV lamp power modulator. And there we have our motherboard disconnected. Okay, so the next step is basically to remove this mounting bracket here, the black mounting bracket. Get that in focus here. And we're going to replace it with this new mounting bracket. This new mounting bracket gives us a little more control over where this thing sets. And there are two holes. It's going to go in just like this. So let's get a little closer. You can see. Uh, we've got the one screw here, one screw there, comes off from the other side, just like so. And we're going to take it with the spacer and put this back on. Let's get our tool. So it should look like that. And I'm just going to put the bracket right here for now and just give this a little bit of a tightening on the screw so that it stays in place with that one in place I'll take off the second screw and once that's off Make sure that spacer is still there and screw it into the new mounting bracket. Like so. Tighten it up. Do the same for the other side. Make sure it's tight. And if you look at the difference between the two mounting brackets, we have these slotted 
areas here where they were just a screw hole on the old one which means that'll give us a little more play to move this back and forth on the mother on, on the frame of the printer so that we can make some room for the extra pieces that we are going to be adding okay so the next part is to remove the transformer for the light which is if you follow these cables here it is actually attached to the cone itself i got one more zip tie here i'm just going to pull that off So what we want to do now is to remove the UV transformer from the frame and then we will put that aside so that we have some extra space in here to get the cone out and that's after this step. these little screws on the side here hold up the transformer while you remove the last screw and then that transformer should come out of the way and the power cable from the motherboard comes over here I'm just going to put this aside just like that the next step is to remove the entire light uh, cone which is going to be done with our longer Allen wrench. There are four screws holding this in place. Okay, now that that last one's moving, I'm just going to hold up the lamp with my hand. So here we go guys. What, what we have here are all the parts that come in our kit. We have two side mounts for the light array. We have the new fan a new bracket for the power supply. We have a new bag of screws and spacers. We won't be using all of those because we'll be reusing some of the ones we have. And we have that little power supply board that's gonna get attached to the side. So we're gonna get all these parts kind of organized on our bench and then we're gonna get started. Okay guys, for the next step, what we have to do is reattach the display cable back to the motherboard. With that done, we're also going to take the uh, there, there are four size screws that came with the kit, actually. Extra large, large, medium, and small. We're going to take two of the large, which is the second largest. And we're going to take, let's see if I can get those in here, two of the large screws and two spacers. And these are going to go on our new motherboard assembly. I'm going to put these aside for now. We can get rid of the old bracket because we don't need that anymore. So I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to keep my spacers handy. I'm going to flip this over on its side so we have a little easier access to the motherboard. And what I want to do now is attach the display, the, uh, the LED display cable back onto the motherboard. There's a blue side to this and a printed side. The blue side goes down, so I'm going to take that with the printed side up. We're going to make sure that these two levers, little gray lever, are popped up so that the cable can go in and I am going to gently wiggle that cable in place once it's all the way in I'm going to lock that by sliding those slides back down and now the cable should be in place once that's in place I have to mount this back to our frame, which the two screws are actually on the bottom, let's get her here because I put this over, let's get rid of 
this USB cable. So we have our LED or LCD ca display cable right here. There is a mounting hole right there, another one right here, and that is for these large screws. <clears throat> How they go on is this way. We're going to put the screw in first. With this driver, we're going to need this driver and our spacer. Slide this in. Find the screw hole right there. And I'm going to start that screw thread. So with that one started, now I'm going to get my spacer and my other screw in place. Take my Allen wrench. And get that one threaded in. And then just tighten them both up. The spacers will firm up the mounting of the motherboard onto the other side of the upper plate. Just like so. Now our motherboard is in place and it's set lower or closer towards the side of the printer. Okay, so the next step is to attach the LCD connector, which goes back on the connector here. Let's see if we can get a camera shot of that. And when you put this back on, you're going to be very, very careful with it. Just slide it around until you feel it like wanting to go back into place. And once it's there, you should be able to click it in place. Now that leaves us an extra little problem. We have this little cable that's kind of loose here. So what I want to do is I want to take this down so that it's out of our way. And we're going to do that very carefully. And I'm going to put that right there just so that it's safe like that. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is mount the mounting brackets for the UV LED array and these mounting brackets they're the angled brackets they're going to mount to the holes that we mounted the uh, cone to there's one here and in here and another one there and there and what we're going to do is mount those so that they fit if I can get my if I can get this in here just like so now you're going to have to be careful because you don't want to scratch the LCD display so when you put these in, just take your time and make sure that you keep them in an area that's not going to be scratching the, the frame. And then I'm going to gently get this mounted. Make sure it's tight. And once you're satisfied, move on to the next one. Okay, both mounting brackets are now tight. Okay, so for the next step, we're going to actually mount the LED array. So the LED array gets mounted, the motherboard is on one side, which in this case I've got it on the printer's side, and I'm going to mount the array so that the cable for the array 
is away from or on the opposite side is our motherboard. We're also going to use the four remaining medium screws that came with your kit. So make sure you get those handy and they're available. Get your screwdriver ready. And where did I put my screwdriver? Right here. sure they're tight. Now our array is set. Okay, so for this next part, we're going to install the new fan. The new fan gets installed on the uh, on the frame just like this. And how it's going to work is you'll see on your array that all the grooves are equal distance except for two lines, one here and one right here that are a little longer. So you're going to use the long screws or the extra large screws. You're going to have the fan with the printing face towards the LED light array and you are going to push in with your screwdriver get the screw head or the screw threads aligned and about in the center of that widest part and you're going to put some pressure on that and start turning until hopefully you get this to go into I'm going to move myself over until you get it to go into that wide groove which is right there and with any luck It'll self-thread. It looks like we got one in. Now I'm going to do the opposite corner. And I'm going to get this into the wider vent on that one. And then apply some pressure. And that should self-thread onto that one also. What you'll need are two of the small screws from your kit upgrade, your upgrade kit. We're going to take our Allen wrench, get that threaded onto that. And we are going to mount the board onto the new mounting plate. So that it looks like this. So when we mount it, it'll mount just like so. With one done, let's grab the second, put our screw in place, grab our power supply for the array. And then we'll tighten that down. Not too tight. Remember, this is an electrical component, so you don't want to over tighten it. With that mounted onto the new frame, we can take two screws, driver ready, and mount it onto the Epex's frame. And just get it tight enough so that it's not going to come out. Almost getting to the point where we're just about done. So now it comes the time where we have to hook things up. This is the power supply for the light array, the LED light array that we're going to, the new one that we installed. And this is the cable for that. What we have to do is install that here. And it only goes in one way, so make sure that's in and tight. The next thing we have to do is start installing the power cables. This is the power cable for our uh, LED driver. The power supply 
coming in from the AC power goes here, goes into the first section right here. So make sure that uh, you can get that in place. If these are, if this is a little tight, then you might want to loosen up your board here. If it's not, you can get these in there. Then uh, don't worry about it so much. Next thing is the power supply for the LED lamp. And it's a little tricky getting them all in place, but uh, just work with it, you'll get them in. Okay, so my power is hooked up for both the AC adapter and the power going to the driver for the LED light array. The next thing we want to do is install the fans. The first one would be the fan for the heat sink on the LED array. The last one is the power supply for the fan on the frame. Okay. We have two more connectors. This connector here, the smaller of the two, is for the uh, adapter the light sensor for our stop switch and that goes I believe right here and then we have this adapter which is for the stepper motor the z-axis motor goes right in the middle and should go in relatively easy so all our cables are plugged in, we, of course we haven't buttoned them up yet, but we're going to do a test first, so let's plug this in and make sure that it works and that we can turn this on, oops, wait, we forgot our USB cable, don't forget to plug in your USB cable, USB cable in there, now we can go ahead and turn this on and do an array test to make sure that the array is actually working correctly before we button this all up. So I'm going to grab my USB stick and then we're going to turn this on and see what happens guys. Beautiful so far so good. Now let's just check and see if we do a, uh, get my camera zoomed in here. Tools. Next. Okay, fans should turn on and we have a perfect array. And that looks really good. So I'm pretty happy with the results here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and button it all back up. Well guys, I didn't show you how to button it all up, but I did want to take a uh, quick shot of what I did here. I just wanted to do the test print one more time using the parallel array, and it came out really, really well. And I'm going to do some comparison tests and give you some ideas of how well I believe the parallel light worked or didn't work. So stand by for the next week's video because I'll be covering that. But uh, that's pretty much how you go ahead and change your parallel light array from the standard array. If you have any questions, you can contact Epex. They will get in touch with you relatively quickly. Um, it's a pretty simple process. It takes about an hour, an hour and a half at most. And just basic tools. Most of the tools come probably with your uh, printer anyway. Again, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, consider hitting the subscribe button. If you can, share it. Share it. Uh, as often as you can the more shares you get the better my channel does and it helps to support my channel and I I owe you guys all that support thanks for watching guys take care thanks guys for taking the time to watch some of my videos I really appreciate it if you like these videos and you find them helpful please give me a thumbs up and if you want to see new stuff that I put out usually on a weekly basis hit the subscribe button and you can get notified by clicking on that little bell I really appreciate any uh, sharing that you can do and the thumbs up that I get if you like these videos kind of helps with uh, my channel to grow 
You'll see that in the descriptions and on my website, I do put affiliate links to products that I show and use in these videos. Those affiliate links uh, give me a little small commission, doesn't cost you anything if you buy them. And when you buy within the first 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a tiny little commission that helps keep this channel going. Any little bit helps to keep this up and running. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up and share on social media. Take care, guys. Happy watchmaking and jewelry making.